He's going to a fancy dress party, aren't you? <laughs> Audrey. Tell them. I mean, they do anything for a laugh. <laughs> Tell them, come on. Sorry, love, you closing up? Oh, no, you're all right. I was just going to have a cup of tea myself as it goes I'm parched. Not going to get back for Faye? No, she's gone to a sleepover. She went off before. <laughs> All smiles with new pyjamas folded in a little overnight case. <laughs> Height of sophistication. <laughs> yeah, so easily pleased at that age. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how did you get out of the scam? Yeah, everything fine, as far as they know. What do you mean, as far as they know? You should have seen Chesney and Katie's faces looking at the screen, all starry-eyed. As you'd expect. Well, me, all I can think of is... What if the baby turns out like Izzy? Yours is a lovely girl. No, I know, and I'm really proud of her. You know the way she's lived her life, despite of everything. But believe me, it's been a very rocky road to get where we are today. I can imagine. You know, she needed a lot of practical help and support along the way. And then there's all the emotional stuff to go with it. <laughs> How could Chesney and Katie cope with all that on their own? <laughs> yeah, but they're not on their own. They've got you. They don't want me. I know I let my god run away at me sometimes, and that's just me, but honestly, I can't do anything right. Today, right, I gave Katie a few bob to pay for a bill. Chesney chucked a wobbler. Yeah, but that'd be down to pride. You know, he's still a young man, still trying to find his way no, in the world. I know, and I'm glad he's looking out for Katie. At least he's not some work shy waste of space, but I just don't understand why they see me as the enemy. I love fancy dress parties. <laughs> Maybe I might tag along. I can pull off. A very plausible Barbara Cartland, if I do say so myself. There you go, love. So, who have you come as? Don't tell me. <gasps> You're the blonde one out of Charlie's Angels. Shush. I, I mean the TV series, obviously, not the film. Audrey, you two need a bit of privacy. It's a bit late for that. But why don't you come back to my place? I should never... Kylie saw me like this, and I just thought it would I be better... I might have known she'd be involved in this fiasco. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought if, if we... If I told everybody the truth, then she couldn't hurt us. She couldn't hurt you, Audrey. Well, you idiot. I said no. I categorically told you not to do this. So, he's done this before? Look, I'm a transvestite. <laughs> this is what I do. Each to his own. Or oh, her own. Exactly. Not harming anyone, is she? Audrey, please look at me. Everybody's looking at us, ma'am. I think we should leave. How could you do this to me? You've ruined everything. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> what a freak show. You revolted Wow, me. what a state. Talk about Lily Savage. <laughs> Lily Savage's ugly sister, more like. Hey, now that's enough, lady. <laughs> well, you've stole my thunder a bit there, Mark, but... You know what? It's worth it just to see their faces. <laughs> you really are a masterpiece of work. I'd best run after her. I wouldn't, Marcia. No, not in those shoes. You'll do yourself an injury. I'm sorry, Chaz. I was determined not to do this. It's just I'm a bit shocked, that's all. Fizz, just try and calm down. I'm sorry. It's just that DC Redfern came in to see me and I thought maybe I was off the hook or something, but he's charged me. With the murder of Giant Charlotte. Oh no. You can't be joking. I know. He's mad. I would. I didn't do it, Chess. Why don't you believe me? Um, sorry, someone else needs to use the phone, so, um. I'm gonna go. Listen, yes, we'll come in and see you soon. Okay, thanks. Look after yourself. Yeah, you too. Bye. They're saying she's done well. What? Joy Fishwick and Charlotte, they've charged her with air murders as well as Collins. <sighs> Sorry for bending your ear, love. Oh, don't be daft. I bet that's the last thing you needed after a hard day's graft, eh? Look, you can talk to me anytime. Maybe no. Right. Let's get back to the yard. Okay. The paper to catch up on. <laughs> right, see ya. See ya. Hey, have you got a minute? Don't tell them about Fizz. What's up? I believe your dad put his foot in it today. I know he can be a bit overprotective, but his heart's in the right place. He's genuinely worried about you. Is he? 
I know he was dead set against you getting pregnant so young, but who could blame him? But he's put his feelings aside to support you. He could have washed his hands of you, but he won't because he loves the bones of you. If we really upset him. He feels surplus to requirements, which is a shame because when this baby comes along, you're going to need all the help you can get. Yeah, we'll be fine. I'm not saying it because you're young. It's because having a baby is flipping hard work for anyone. He's in his office now if you want to go and see him. Right. You know, being independent and grown up doesn't mean you have to shut everyone else out. Can you believe you're giving us that big sob story? Your dad's hard as nails. He's not, though. Not really. Oh, you could have fooled me. Look, whatever you think about him, he's still my dad. Don't tell me. You come round to make me tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I just needed a quick word. Now, go on. Tommy came to see me today. Yeah? At the surgery. Well, something wrong with him, is there? Sorry, I know you're not allowed to say. Uh, normally, I take patient confidentiality very seriously, but this time, I think I'll make an exception. He told me he had a huge pain in his backside. He did what? And that would be me, apparently. Oh, shit. What did he do that for? <sighs> to try and warm me off. Thinks you need protecting from me. Oh, who does he think he is? Right, next time I see him, I'm gonna knock his flaming head off. Or we could be a bit more subtle. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. Let's go out tonight. Somewhere fabulous. We'll show him we're good together and he's got nothing to worry about. So? I like it, okay, I can do so. See you in an hour, sir. Dressed to impress. I hope you're proud of yourself. You've just humiliated my mother in front of the entire pub. Audrey, I'm so sorry. What are you thinking of? Going about in broad daylight? Bold as brass? I didn't for one minute imagine it would turn out like this. Then you are a flaming fool. I told you to keep it between the two of us, but no, no, you knew better. How long have you known? Since day one. You do this on a regular basis. I told you I'm a transvestite. Audrey's learned to cope with it. Why can't you? Oh, well, yes. Why don't you come round for a sleepover? We'll have a girly night in and swap makeup tips. I'm not hurting anyone. My mother would beg to differ. Have you seen the state of her? Her nerves are shot. Audrey, I'm so sorry. How can you bear to go around looking like that? You're an absolute fright. This gets better and better. Where's my phone? Tranny on the rampage, part two. You poisonous little bitch. You love it, don't you, huh? Hurting people. In fact, that is the only time I see you with a genuine smile on your face. Hang on a minute. Oh, my God. Has David made a mistake marrying you? You are evil. Evil. Rotten to the core. That last, somebody else seen her for what she really is. Don't turn on me. It's not my fault. No, nothing ever is. You sacked me for no good reason. All I wanted was my job back. I was kind to you. I gave you a chance. I thought I could see something good in you. I mean, how wrong was I? This is down to him. I'm only messing about. I weren't really going to show anybody. Oh, go to hell. Right. Ma'am, I can't leave you like this. Come back to mine. Leave me alone, girl. Don't worry, I'll look after her. Don't tell me you're getting the bus. I'm getting a cab. Wait, someone else might see him. Steve or Lloyd. It's a bit late worrying about that. Huh? Right you are. OK. Thanks. I've got to go make some money. Yeah, thanks again. Bye. I'm so sorry about before. Ah, don't worry about it, love. I'll pull through. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Owen. I know I've been a bit of a pain. Well, you were just trying to look out for I get that, mate. We brought you something. Hmm? Ah! Oh, <laughs> Grandad! I can't believe Ah! Oh. Mm. I'll stick it up in the van so I can see it every day. Hey, listen, why don't we go and celebrate? I'll take you both out for a meal. Do you fancy the bistro? Yeah, that'd be great, mm. but... Well, you two go. Have a proper catch-up. Are you sure? Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't really do ponty food. Mm. Anyway, there's a pasty in the fridge with my name on it. You're shaking. Oh. Audrey, please, come and sit down. 
You know, I have made a fool of myself more times than I can remember. But you have just torn my whole world apart. And you know what the worst thing is? Hmm? People feel sorry for me. They pity me. That Audrey Roberts, oh, poor old cow. <laughs> She's so desperate for a man, she'll go with anything. <laughs> oh. People look at you when you're like this. And they don't know whether to laugh in your face or run away. I mean, they see a freak, weirdo, deviant. What does that make me, hmm? Ugh, such a tough call. Do I go with Mighty Meter or Hot and Spicy Stuff Gross? You see, I know why he doesn't like me. It's because he knows that I can see right through him. I hate making decisions, mate. You see, I know he's only after one thing, and when he gets it, she'll be dumped. Really, when you think about it, when you say yes to one thing, you automatically say no to another, and that is harsh. He is the most shallow guy I've ever met. I've got no time for him. Oh, please, because no one could accuse you of being shallow, could they? <laughs> hey, I can be deep when I want to be. Now, am I ordering this takeout or what? Oh. I'm not complaining, I hope, but... You're a bit overdressed for a night in front of the telly, aren't you? I'm off out with my fella. Oh, um, I forgot to say as well, thanks for giving him a talking to. You never. Only now I think it's made him a bit more keener. You know, some blokes are like that. You say one thing, they do the opposite. It's male pride, isn't it? I mean, these two, they're like a pair of rutting stags. Oh. Audrey, I am so sorry. I just... I never imagined... I know, I know. I wanted to be brave for you. You've been so amazing, Audrey. You, you've accepted me for what I am, all of me. You have no idea how liberating, how wonderful that was. Mark, I thought I'd made myself clear. You know, I didn't want people to know. Audrey, I'm so sorry. I've put you through the most hideous ordeal. I'm afraid to ask because I'm terrified to hear the answer. Do you think you can ever forgive me? Oh. Why can't you be like this all the time? Hmm? This is the face I love. Just you as you're meant to be. A man. My lovely, lovely man. Audrey's going to be all right. Do you think I should go round? No, I'd leave well alone if I were you. They've got a lot of talking to do. I take it you didn't have an inkling of any of this. She never said a word. I'm not surprised. It's not the sort of thing you shout from the rooftops. No, I suppose not. But, I mean, he was dressed nicely, wasn't he? I mean, I could have wore that top with my black slacks. Yeah, you're right. Very tasteful, really. Because if Kevin dressed up as a woman, he'd go for something really tarty, like leather miniskirt and fishnet stockings and loads of red nylon. Let's hope he never gets the urge. <laughs> I can't even begin to imagine Norris dressed as a woman. Just be thankful for small mercies. Yeah, he's far too rugged and masculine. I wonder if Mark and Audrey swap clothes, cos they're about the same size, aren't they? Well, now you come to mention it, so is Claudia. Are you saying he was never really interested in my mother? Only her wardrobe. I wonder if they were ever, how shall I put it, intimate when he was in lady mode. Do you mind? Good to see you tucking in again. I'm so glad this morning sickness is gone. What are these? They're dead nice. I don't know. But it looks like one of them insoles you stick in your shoes. <laughs> They're parsnip crisps. Ah, oh, right, thanks. Excuse me? Is that your baby? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if I have oh, a look? No. Oh, they're so cute. I can't believe I'm going to be a granddad, and here am I, barely out of my 30s. You're in your dreams. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry about today, honey. I should have been more sensitive. No, you're right. You only said what I was thinking. 
I know I said that. I didn't think about the baby being like Izzy, but I had. And I'm glad that we can't test for it before he's born. How come I'd have thought sooner the better? Well, what if I found out he did have ALS on loss? Then what would I do? I don't know, love. I can't get rid of it, can I? Because then that'd be like saying Izzy's life is worth nothing. Honestly, who did I think I was fooling? No, no, he's, um, he's going to a fancy dress, actually. <laughs> I mean, I just made matters worse. You panicked? No, I was spineless. I should have supported you. I went about it the wrong way. I... Why didn't I just have the guts to say, yes, look, this is Marcia. It's uh, just another side of my lovely, gorgeous man. Aren't people surprising? Isn't it great? No, I backed you into a corner. I should never have done it. Listen, it'll be fine. We'll just keep a low profile for a few days. Let the dust settle. The gossips, they'll soon get bored. They'll move on to someone else. It'll be fine. I promise you. You were brilliant with Izzy. Dead caring, dead patient and that. I did my best, love. I know that she doesn't complain, but... She's still suffering, isn't she? So would it be cruel to bring a child into the world knowing it's going to have to cope with that? Well, I can't lie to you, love. If someone was to wave a magic wand to make her normal, for want of a better word, I'd say yeah. Definitely. But you know what, love? She's brave. She has coped with everything that life has chucked at her. And all in all, she is one amazing woman. I know. So? If your child should have the condition, then we will deal with it. Yeah? Together. Thanks, Dad. And I'll tell you something else. No matter what happens to your kid, he will have the best role model. Your gobby, bad tempered, <laughs> <laughs> stubborn, big softy of a sister. Do you know, I remember when I was at school, uh, my best friend, Brenda, were left-handed. Now, I don't know about you, but in my young day, that was totally unacceptable. Can you believe that? I mean, that was so ridiculous. Oh, I just feel ancient. Anyway, Mr. Sanfield, the English teacher, used to tie her left hand behind her back to make her right with the other hand. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, it didn't matter how much he picked on her or bullied her. Always finished up writing with her left hand. Because that's how she was made. Eventually, the world caught up with her and people realised it didn't matter. People's fears come from ignorance, don't they? Hmm? I just hope that one day soon the world will catch up with you. And everybody that's like you. I can stop. No, you can't. You've had so much grief from this already. I mean, you've lost friends, lovers. Look, if you could stop, you would. Sweetheart, you deserve somebody that will accept you for all those things you are. Audrey, you're the love of my life. <sighs> Mark, we both know that you will never be able to give Marcia up. And let's face it, why should you? Really, listen, it's fine. I, I'll keep that part of my life private, no. just out of sight. You shouldn't have to. But I will, I'll do it for you. Yeah. And how long will it be before you start resenting me then? Listen, we can work through this. I know we can, just give us time. I just wish I was the kind of person that could cope with this. I wish I was more modern and open-minded. But you are. You're, you're a wonderful person. Thank you. I tried, Mark. I really did. I am so, so sorry. I've just had a lovely meal with Katie. Oh, you sorted things out then? Oh, good. Yeah. She hasn't Katie did quite a U-turn, actually. If I'd have known any better, I'd think someone had given them a bit of a talking to. Really? Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hey, she gave me this. What's this? To my granddad. With love to my granddad. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, bless. Anyway, stick this in the fridge, will you? What's this? Is that real champagne? Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, I could put tea on the table for a week for what this cost you. We are celebrating. We just exchanged. I am now officially your landlord. Oh, Owen. That's brilliant. Honestly, I'm dead pleased. Yeah, me too. You know, you're my hero, keeping a roof over our heads like this. Well, it's not all on me, Traffic, is it? I mean, you've put up with me droning on and you've been good with Casey. Oh, come here, let me give you a <laughs> hug. This champagne making is all unnecessary. Seems unlikely not open to you. Anyway. Yeah. I'll stick the kettle on, mm. shall I? Okay. Oh, ma'am. Look at this state of you. I tried phoning a couple of times, but you didn't pick up. No. Well, I suppose you and um, you know who a lot to talk about. Yes. His name is Mark Dale. And Marcia, apparently. It is all such a mess. Mm, you're telling me. I mean, I love him very much, but... I just can't cope anymore, so I've had to tell him to go. Oh, Come here. <laughs> I've just made a fool of myself again. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, losing some money is about to take on a whole new dimension next tonight. The real human cost of fraud on a massive scale, and it could happen to anyone in a brand new series. The Fraud Squad are on the trail of those responsible next tonight. <laughs>